One of the things that people don't realize, you actually don't need to eat a lot of animal protein to get the protein that you need. Here at the Pritikin Center, we give you about a four or five ounce piece in the evening and you're already getting about 30 grams of protein. You're not gonna get that uh, tomahawk ribeye 16 ounce steak coming here, but you will get a variety of protein, whether it be from plant-based protein or animal protein. From the Pritikin Longevity Center in Miami, Florida, welcome to the Healthier Everyday Podcast, where we talk about your health, your fitness, your mindset, the food you eat, and putting it all together to create an amazing lifestyle. In this episode, Kara and Vince discuss the importance of protein in our diets and how to get it from both animal and plant-based sources. They explain that our bodies require essential amino acids to build muscles, tendons, and enzymes, and how some of these must come from the food we eat. Kara Bernstein has over 20 20 years of experience in the nutrition field. Kara coaches her clients for issues such as weight loss, cardiovascular disease, gut health, and behavior modification strategies. Vincenzo Della Pola has been creating healthy and flavorful meals with Pritikin since 2007. When he's not working with Pritikin dietitians on a new recipe, he holds daily cooking classes and monthly workshops, helping people expand their creativity using healthy ingredients in the kitchen. Enjoy today's episode and don't forget to like and subscribe. Proteins are quite important. They actually are the building blocks of our body. So they make muscles, they make tendons, they form skin, they're involved in enzymes and neurotransmitters. They're super, super um, important. And your body is made up of a bunch of amino acids that are actually linked together. They're like these little beads and they're linked together. And all those amino acids form proteins. And that's where proteins come from. And your body produces them and also they come from food. So unfortunately, um, we cannot get all of the essential amino acids from our bodies to create a protein. So we have to get some of them from the outside. So there's actually nine, ascent, they call them essential amino, essential amino it, acids. Karen. I you can, can do, do this. Um, and they're essential because they don't come from our bodies. They come from the outside and we have to get them so that we have all the, the protein that we need to build our muscles, our tendons, um, have those enzymes doing the things that they need to be doing, um, having our hormones do what they need to be doing. So, so l- let me ask you something, Kara. How, do most, people, how do most people get their protein? Well, I would venture to say, based on most of the people that I see, I would say a lot of people these days get their protein from animals. Um, yeah. and, and the truth is, is that, um, animal protein is the easiest protein, um, because it has all of those essential amino acids that we need. So, um, that makes it easy. And there's a lot of protein in animals in a very small amount of animal. So that's one of the, one of the things that people don't realize is that you actually don't need to eat a lot of animal protein to get the protein that you need because ounce per ounce An ounce of protein has about seven grams of protein. And here at the Pritikin Center, um, we give you about a four, what, a four or five ounce piece in the evening. And you're already getting about 30 grams of protein just from that little four ounce piece of of meat. Correct. And throughout the day, I mean, we're going to certainly, you know, allow you to have animal protein here, but it's not something that we, you know, push on you to where uh, you're not going to get that uh, tomahawk ribeye 16 ounce steak coming here. Uh, but you will get a variety of protein, right? And whether it be from plant-based protein or animal protein, uh, and and, I, and we try to go for a. I like I like I like your 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 um, my it? legs. One, one, one leg, two legs. Yes, one leg, two, so, two legs, four legs, <laughs> six legs. But Who has no. eight legs? So that well, yeah, yeah the leg thing doesn't always work. But um, when I do my lecture, the um, planning your eating strategy, and I really describe what our pretty good eating plan looks like. Um, we talk a little bit about the animal protein because people have so many questions based on what they see um, in the media. It's all about pr- eating protein, protein, protein. And here we don't have that much animal protein. It's really only in the evening <clears throat> meal. So they're trying to better understand what, why, why don't we have so much animal protein? And I say, well, first of all, like I said earlier, a little, a little bit of animal goes a long way in terms of how much protein you get. And secondly, um, there's a fair amount of saturated fat and protein. 
and that clogs up our arteries and increases our cardiovascular markers. So the least amount of saturated fat we can have is, is what we do. So um, the majority of our protein actually comes from plants and um, you can get a plethora of protein from plants yeah. um, and you don't have any of that saturate, saturated fat associated with it. And in addition, um, the plant protein has the fiber too. There you go. And there is no fiber in the animal. That's a good, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. But I didn't answer your question about the legs, by the way. So let's go so back let, to let's that. Go, let's, let's go back to the legs real quick, but I want to definitely get back to the plant protein. So, okay. So, so, so I say less legs better when I talk about animal protein in class. So the cow has four, the chicken or turkey or poultry has two, and then the fish has none. So less legs There's are better. There's an exclusion with duck here, okay? There's except that you brought that up. Duck, the right? duck is quite and, um, and high goose, in, usually. Yeah, in, uh, let, let's go with turkey and chicken. Yeah, we like turkey, chicken, and, and, and for even like pheasant, right? I mean, like pheasant. Yeah, I mean, because the leaner the, the leaner the saturated fat, um, the less cardiovascular impact it's going yeah. to have. And what you really want out of the animal is the protein. You don't you don't want the saturated fat from the animal. Correct, correct. We can get that from other places. And you, you mentioned some of the benefits of the plant proteins, the fiber. Um, what, was, what was the other one, the fiber and? So, so the plant proteins have a lot of fiber in them and they don't have any saturated fat. No saturated, it, it, on the other side, Sticking to animal proteins, are there are there things in animal proteins that you can't get from that, plants? Absolutely. So um, there's there's so many wonderful things about the the plant based protein, but one of the things about plant based proteins is they don't have all of those nine essential amino acids in them. So they're not what we call a complete protein. So sometimes you just have to have a multiple of different types of plant-based proteins. For example, you could have black beans and then you can have brown rice. So when you, when you have, you don't actually have to have the beans and rice together. We used to think that to be true, to complete the protein. We thought we had to at one time have the, the beans with the rice together to make it complete. But we now know that as long as you're having the different types of plant-based proteins at different times, you're going to make that complete and you're, you're good. So that's one thing about the plant plants that's lacking, because if you are a vegetarian per se and you're not eating any animal, you have to make sure you get all of those essential amino acids in your diet. And it's completely possible, but you have to pay a little bit more attention. And then when you eat the animal protein, it has everything it needs. So you don't need to pay as much attention in terms of getting the nutrients and the essential amino acids, but you have to pay attention to the saturated fat content. So, you know, the question always is, sh should I be a vegetarian or should I not and use some animal? And, you know, that's, that's always the big question. You know, there, there are so many um, positive things about utilizing plants versus animal, but um, animals, in my opinion, certainly have a place. Um, they're loaded with iron. They're, um, like I said, you can have a small amount of protein and get what you need or a small amount of um, animal protein and get what you need. Um, there's lots of B12. There is no B12 in a lot of the plant-based proteins. So you got to make sure you get the B12 in. So here at the Pritikin Center, we primarily focus on the plant-based protein um, for the fiber and the lack of saturated fat. But we do include a little bit of the animal uh, to make sure that we get what we need. Um, and also um, the animal protein is filling. It is a lot harder to break down those amino acids than it is to break down the carbohydrates. So when you eat the animal protein, it actually can help keep you fuller for a little bit longer period of time. So some people that are um, on the weight loss journey find that the animal protein is helpful in satiation. So the big question is, yeah, like, is it better to be a vegetarian or should I include some animal protein in my diet? I get this question all of the time when we talk about the Pritikin eating plan. And here at the Pritikin Center, universally, we are more of a plant-based pr protein program, but we do include some animal um, in, the, in the evening time. And most importantly, when I get that question, I think it's really, really important that I talk to the person individually, because if I talk to them individually, I can get a better understanding of uh, what their lifestyle is like, what they're typically doing now. Uh, my main goal is to really meet the guest where they're at yeah. 
and uh, try to make them do better, be better, make small habitual changes that will um, start becoming part of their lifestyle. So for example, if somebody is a meat eater, you know, they're they're used to eating meat five times a week and all of a sudden they come to the Pritikin Center and there's meat once a day, it, it might be quite difficult for them. So we talk about, well, how can we maybe decrease it a little bit? Maybe we can switch from something like um, a churrasco steak to bison. Um, there, there, there's ways to be better and do better in the animal protein space. So pretty much that's really what I recommend. I don't give a blanket, yes, you should be a vegetarian or no, you shouldn't. I really need to understand the person better to give the recommendations um, that I think will be best for them. Here at the Pritikin Center, it's like rainbows and unicorns. All you gotta do is show up and everything is planned and prepared for you. But when you get home, get ready for those lions and tigers and bears. Whether you're racing out the door to work and skipping breakfast or glued to the Zoom call and no time for lunch, or maybe you're in retirement and every day is a holiday. The solution, you need a plan. My name is Kara. I've been a registered dietitian for over 20 years and I've helped thousands of clients create sustainable plans that stick. At the Pritikin Center, we offer a one-to-one -one remote nutrition coaching program with me. Together, we will create a customized plan that addresses your lifestyle, your health markers, and any of those derailers that lead you astray. Support and accountability can be the difference between finding success and constantly chasing after it. Sign up today for more information about Pritikin at Home Concierge Nutrition Program. I think that's what Pritikin does best is that we incorporate a good variety of different things here, uh, whether it be from the variety of animal protein that we incorporate, you know, touching on real quickly the, the, the amount of fish that we use here from salmon to halibut to sea bass to snapper to bronzino. There's so much you can use. And fish, you know, talking about kind of go, going back to, you know, it has no legs. So that's kind of like the best thing to use if you're going to mm -hmm. use animal protein. Um, you know, we didn't really kind of get to that point. We we talk about so much here. Protein's a lot. You know, it's yeah, hard there's to a cover lot. We could talk for in just, hours. In, in just one podcast, but we'll try to keep, you know, um, you know it, it contained somewhat. But, you know, whether whatever fish you're using here, there's lots of good fish you can use, and it gives you a good variety. You maybe like to use a little bit more land protein. Try to use more chicken, right? Chicken breast would be the ideal choice to use. Whether you grill it or you, or, 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 or you pan sear it or, or, or you broil it, just don't deep fry it, right? Don't cover it a bunch of oil. Don't marry it with a bunch of oil and salt on there, right? You know, you can certainly do something like a healthy dressing, like a citrus herb dressing, marinate a piece of chicken breast in that, put it on the grill. Oh, wonderful, it up. right? You can go ahead and coat a, a, a salmon fillet in, in, in something like our toasted sesame dressing and even broil that. It comes out great. You know, so there's little small things you can do to make your life so much easier. And if you want to incorporate the animal protein, we allow you to have that. You know, our recommendation is basically like I would say like, Every other day, right? Like that's kind of what we, you know, I usually tell guests, like if you want to have it once a day, well, you can have it once a day. It's there on the menu. But we try to push, you know, that variety of other other protein sources. Trying, trying, trying new sources that Blend, they're not used to having. Blending it in, right? Like one, one thing that I try telling people to incorporate is the TVP product, right? It's a good meat substitute. So whether you get the crumbled version from Bob's Red Mill, or you get something from like a brand called So Soya, or plant basics that sells like big chunkier versions. All it is is made from soy flour and water. So it's a very easy way to kind of transition into maybe you're blending in some actual ground chicken or ground turkey and pan searing that and then adding the TVP right. with it. Right, just kind of, right, you know, that's that, that meeting kinda, where you're, they're you're, at. You're, you're getting like, a good blend of both of those, of, of, of getting that, that ground it. chicken and the TVP together, maybe in a bowl of nay sauce or a chili, and it really works together. Maybe you just use the TVP straight. And that's just one way you can kind of get some of that soy protein, but you've got some beans, you get from, from, from rice, you get uh, you know, plant protein from, 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 from veggies. You from, actually from, do get, you know, we you, don't you realize know, it, but you do get protein you know, minimum, from vegetables. But you do get it, right? So, you know, you get it from grains, you get it from a lot, a lot of different things that people don't even realize sometimes that you're eating already. You know, so most people are just accustomed to kind of, you know, overeating those overindulgent things and, and, and kind of, you know, uh, whether it be whether it be just kind of empty calories from you know, I, I was at a, I was at a restaurant the other day and they kept trying to bring me bread to the table, you know, bread and butter. I was like, no, 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 I didn't want it. And another guy from a different you know different station, 
because they didn't have the server bring it. It was just like a random person. They kept trying to bring us bread. And they, I kept telling them, like, I don't want I'm the bread, man. The bread. Off, man. Yeah. You know, but, but just an example, it's just, you know, people kind of just, when they go out to eat, especially, people are just kind of usually kind of thinking about what's the most satiating thing flavor wise, right? Not satiating thing in my belly. Right. You know, so we're trying to fill you up here with, you know, good food that's healthy for you, but also good, you know, um, you know flavor wise as well. Uh, so it's, it's it's a good amount that you'll ha- have here coming to Pritikin, whether it be from the, you know, the amount of variety of a- animal protein that will serve you here. And we do serve, you know, red meat. You know, we didn't talk about that much besides, um, you know, talk about, hey, that has four legs. So we try to sell you. Once have, a month you know, is the general recommendation. For, for like beef, yeah, once a month, right? Like. If for bison, we serve it once a week here. Bison's healthier, leaner, cleaner than beef. So you know, I'm sure you could touch on, you know, the, 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 the you know, if you look up the actual nutritions, uh, nutritionals of the it. The saturated you know, fat between lower. the bison and the and the yep. the beef is is yeah, it's, huge. It's, 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 it's like it's, fourfold. Yeah, it's 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 pretty pretty eye opening when you look up the actual mm-hmm. nutritionals. Mm-hmm. So look that up. You'll see. In, in any case, we like to serve bison filet mignon. Yeah, that, that's a great way to kind of get something that maybe you're used to, still very lean. If you want to have it actually at a restaurant, you go to a restaurant, they might not have bison. At least get the beef filet mignon. You know, that's a very lean, very desirable, good quality piece of meat. Ask them to grill it. Ask them to grill it. Do it at your house. Pan sear it. Right. Give it good flavor. You know, you can still get that good flavor, good protein without using the salt, without using all the oil and the bad stuff, and, and out, without using the bad meats, right? I mean, when people go out to eat, they're usually looking to get like, you know, those big juicy steaks that the are marbly. like the size the of my head, right? Right. I was at, I was at, I was at a, a butcher shop the other day because I said, you know, there's a local butcher shop in my area. I said, I walked over there. I said, I just opened it up. I said, who's going to like a local butcher shop nowadays? Like right. Most people get meat me from the grocery store. They had prime Wagyu beef. You should have seen the marble. I mean, it was, it, it, was, was it looked like a piece of bacon. There was more fat in this piece of steak and there was meat. You know what I mean? So it was, it, but that's what people want. They salivate towards it. And I know. You don't need to, to have that to make a good, a good mouthfeel. You know, you can still make good uh, flavor, um, you know, fl- flavors build in your palate uh, and still make your food, you know, healthy and desirable. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to mention and touch on, because you talked about sesoya and you talked about TVP um, as great protein sources. And those actually, even though they are plant-based protein, they have all of those nine essential amino acids in them. So they, so soy is considered um, a complete protein. So that is one difference between something like a soy, an edamame or a TVP or something like that versus having lentils, chickpeas, um, yep, yep. any, any of your legumes, which are amazing. But um, the soy, if you, if you do the soy, you will get 100% all, all of those amino acids. So you know, but then there's always people who say, oh, soy this. I heard bad things about soy. I, I'm a guy. You're right. You know, You're right. Estrogen. I get that all the time. Look, I, I, I'm just going to tell you because people are probably thinking it right now. They're listening You're right. Say You're it. right. You know, they're like, what about that? Right. And yeah, look, yeah. It's, there's been studies that tell you what, what, you know, whatever. We don't, you, you know, if you're going to use soy, we don't use it like that's not the it's only not it's not the only thing we're using either right like it's just it's one of many it's one of many number one and number two um the most important thing when you're eating a soy product is that the product is whole um so the edamame is whole it is not processed or refined yeah. we right? have a shiitake soybean edamame here we have uh you know we, we add edamame into our veggie burgers uh and you could buy shelled edamame frozen it's, you just go ahead and, and open up, steam it. You know, don't put any salt on it, right? Right. No, some just other stuff, steam really. it on up and put, put it some in the roasted salad. garlic powder on there. Or Look, you can season it and you can roast those those shelled edamame, and they come out super flavorful, crunchy, just like a you know, roasted chickpea or yep. roasted butter bean. You know, you can take those cooked beans and you can go ahead and roast them, and they come out nice and crunchy. Right. Little, little, That's little, our croutons, extra, right? Chef? Little, little, little snack. Yeah. Our yeah. crunchy chickpeas are, yeah. are our croutons, and you, if you want to stay have, away from the bread, <laughs> right? No, <laughs> literally, if you want to have a salad, and you don't, and you're like, I really want to start going more plant based and gear away from the animal, um, you can throw on a cup, you know, like a half a cup of the crunchy chickpeas and a little bit of edamame, and you got all the protein that you need. Yep. Um, and there's no animal in there, and you're going to get all those essential amino acids, and you are totally good to go. So it is definitely possible to get um, all of the protein that you need from a plant. Um, But I'm not going to take away that you you can get awesome protein 
from animals too. You just want to be really careful how you choose them. What about like the iron? Can you get that from? So really good question. You get iron from both the plant-based protein and the animal, but the animal has something called heme iron, okay. which is much more readily absorbable. I don't know if that makes it. It's much more readily absorbed than the non-heme so iron, which comes better. from <laughs> the plant. So again, that that might be another reason um, as insurance policies to get everything that you need. If you just stick a smidge of the animal in, you're assured to get it. Whereas That's if it. you don't, you absolutely can get everything that you need, but you really need to um, pay more attention to make sure does, you get it in. Does red meat have more iron than other things? Yes. I remember yes, I was at a doctor's does. office and the door next to me was open. And the guy, it has more heme iron. Okay, which so, is the, so this makes sense then. Because they got, they got the, 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 the patient, I could hear him, the doctor kept saying, to him, you need to eat more red meat. And the guy said, well, doc, I don't really like red meat. He's like, I don't care. Eat more red meat. I'm like, wow. I was like, this doctor is my doctor too. I'm like, right. yeah, he's not easy. He's not very easy going, you know, but you know, there's, I guess there's it, other it's ways. Just, you can... it, because for a little bit of that meat, you will get a lot of this heme iron. Um, okay. And if you're low, it, it, I mean, they used to also tell you to, to eat liver. Was oh, another wow. liver is loaded with the iron, but it's also loaded in fat. Too. Yeah, so exactly. for extreme circumstances, it's definitely warranted. But for the average Joe, I, I wouldn't really so recommend doing, eating a lot so of liver. So doing bison like once a week totally is going to get you what you need. Then, it right? totally is going to get you what you doing need other things as well. in a very strategic way. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's the name of the game, guys, right? If, if you, whatever we do in life, we want to do it the most efficient way that we can. And um, when we take away the saturated fat from the animal, that's the most efficient way to do it because you get all the protein that you need without the fat. Yep. And um, same thing. The other thing I wanted to mention about the legumes, like the lentils, the chickpeas, the black beans, um, they also have carbohydrate in them. Okay. So, you know, we talk about that a little bit in the Pritikin Center, and I really like to customize um, the meal planning for, for the client based on um, things like insulin resistance. So a lot of times people get really confused about eating things like beans or lentils because they're afraid that they're too carby. Um, and one of the things that I mentioned is, yes, they have a lot of carbohydrate like a pasta would, but the difference is, is that the bean has a ton of protein and a ton of fiber, which absolutely helps stabilize those blood sugars. So when you're looking, like say you take a can of um, lentils and you're looking at it and you're trying to say, is this good for me or not? Um, what's really important to look at is if you look at the protein and the fiber and they're pretty similar, right? So the protein in a cup of beans is probably like somewhere around 15 to 20 grams. And so is the fiber. So as the fiber is elevated, um, it really helps stabilize the blood sugars and counteracts the carbohydrate that's in it. So beans okay. are amazing in terms of getting, giving you the carbohydrate, carbohydrate, protein, and lack thereof fat. So that's, that's, the, that's the wonderful part of the bean. And that's why we promote it so much here at the Pritikin Center. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about like going to the grocery store and some of the, the things that people might find as far as protein, more specifically animal protein, like such as uh, like rotisserie chicken or maybe the things that come to mind are rotisserie chicken, canned tuna, deli meat. Well, Kara goes to the grocery store, right? I, I mean, do. I do. You know she, what? Well, we all go to the grocery store. But we she, all go to the grocery store. Whole, whole but I probably it, go to guests. the grocery store more more than anyone because I go to the grocery store for my own family, and then I go every week um, with the Pritikin Center, and we do this really fun. Um, we call it a scavenger hunt, and I give them all these riddles, and they have to find different foods that meet Pritikin guidelines. Um, one of the biggest questions is. What are some really good portable foods that I can bring with me if I'm traveling or if I know I'm going out for the day and I have a whole bunch of errands and I don't want to necessarily eat out? Um, so we go to the section um, that has things like um, tuna in it. And one of the biggest things that you have to worry about tuna is the sodium. Yeah. So um, there's these um, great little pouches that have um, no sodium added tuna and they're not in a can, right? So you don't need to bring your can opener with you. It's just a little pouch. You could open it up. You could get some bag salad, pop it in there. And tuna is um, completely lean. It's got great um, omega-3 fatty acids, which we didn't talk so much about, but great for the heart. Um, not a lot of calories, um, quite filling because it's high in protein, super portable. So, you know, not every single food that's portable, convenient, and tasty 
has to be refined and processed. They definitely, so tuna is one. I would say those edamame that you were talking about is, a, is another great protein yeah. source that's convenient and portable. Yeah, don't don't go make yourself a hoagie and bring it with you, right? That yeah, stuff's going to be like, you know, with the bread, Not the know, best with, the, with the salty meats, with the cheeses and all this stuff. Look, I mean, you can, you can definitely make a good flavorful, um, you know, so, for, for me, I would say make a tuna wrap, right? Like tuna you know, wrap get, on a whole get, wheat get, wrap. Get, yeah, get something like tuna, like you said, and jazz it up with some sort of like low fat or fat free sour cream. You know, sauce a it mustard. up. You know, make a sauce with the sour cream as a mustard, sour cream, a little lemon, a little bit of black pepper, a little garlic or something like that. You know, some maybe some chopped up herbs like dill or tarragon or chives, parsley, He's, whatever. He, he right? goes like, off. I'm, I'm so, going to stop at whatever, like the right? fifth ingredient. <laughs> three, three ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> to this sour cream and and and, and, and whole mustard. Wheat tortilla. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so you know, if you're gonna use a tortilla, make sure that it's something that's low in sodium. Uh, make sure it's something that you're gonna find uh, on the market. One brand we like to use is Mar Maria and Ricardo's. Right. Um, but if you're going to use uh, as a base for your um, for your for your for your tuna salad, just don't use mayonnaise, right? I mean, it's so yeah, high no, in fat. The mayonnaise is a toughie. Yeah. It definitely is. But sour cream um, works as a base. Sour cream works. Or Greek even yogurt. Greek yogurt. We say, read my mind Sorry. here. Greek yogurt. Um, and again, I like to add a little bit of mustard in that thing. Gotta, I don't know why. But make the sure mustard, it's, if you're going to use mustard. It's low salt. Look at this. Well, look. Look. <laughs> I, am I telling you? Yeah, you're, you're telling me? Come on, I'm telling you. Okay. Tell me, Tony. So the tell, low sodium. The low, we use no salt added. West Bray Natural. West Bray. Or organic. Bill. If you want to use a lot of mustard, right? If you like that real super tanginess. If you're going to use something like Grey Poupon. She lets me use it here. We use just, it here, like, right? We just spread it really, really lightly on the bread. I was just talking to someone yesterday about the mustard thing, and they're like, you know, I really like this great poupon. Can, can I put this on my sandwich? And I said, it, because they, you know, they had a lot of issues with weight gain and COVID and going out and all of this stuff. And I said, mustard is not your problem. <laughs> There's other, you know, so sometimes we get so caught up in the weeds of the condiments and if they have too much sodium in them. And yes, of course, I would always recommend a no sodium added mustard. But if you're somewhere and they didn't have it available, if you just smudge real lightly, it's not going to yeah. change the life. Yeah, exactly. But just realize how much sodium is in mustard. It's a like lot. super, right? There's a lot. Teaspoon, so you got to make sure yeah. you got to be careful. milligrams. Yeah, it's a lot. So in, in any case, whether you're using a tuna wrap or you're, whether, you, whether you're, you're bringing some little, you know, cup of, Toasted chickpeas with you, or toasted edamame with you, whatever. I mean, you can certainly you know plan ahead because if you're going to the grocery store to go grab something, that's where you're going to get into something that's probably high in fat, probably not the best choice healthy wise. But you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you're you're out, you're where you're at. You you don't have any choices. Right, you got to plan. Try to make try to make the best you know options where you can. But you're planning ahead of time, planning accordingly, can kind of you know, eliminate those, those, those things from ever happening in the first place. Right. So a hundred percent, try to bring a grilled um, chicken wrap with you. Try to, you know, if you go into the grocery store, try to get away from the deli meats first and foremost, cause they're all going to be pretty high in sodium, pretty high in fat. Um, they're all pretty processed, you know? Um, but if you're going to yes, look yes. for the, you know, good proteins, you know, try to go, you know, into the, to the meat section. We don't, we like really to use dark meat here. You know, we would say if you, I mean, for me at my house, I might use it once or twice a month. You know, like the, the chick, the chicken the thighs, thigh. right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's that's something I like to use. One, you know, but we do it's we serve fat, it here. It's fattier. Yeah. It's juicier. I'm not gonna lie. It's juicier, yeah. but it's you know, if you have cholesterol levels elevated, then um, you know you want to make better choices. That's just that's just where you're at right now. You know what I mean? But on the flip side, if you're eating the you know the skirt steak every night and you went to the chicken thigh, then that would be a better call. And yeah. then we would move you on to the breast. Yeah. It's, right? like, it's like a so slow it's, transition it's, yeah, for some people, we, right? It's a progression. Progress <laughs> is progress. Better is better. We should not eat like the 16 ounce chimichurri skirt stick. Exactly. Absolutely. Right? I, I'm a firm believer in, in <laughs> this is a journey and we need to bring our snacks and magazines because it's going to take us a really long time to figure this whole thing out. Um, one other thing I meant to men mention, because we were talking about the different types of breads. So another one that I uh, recommend in terms of bread is the Ezekiel bread, which yeah. is a sprouted wheat. Sprouted is awesome. It's a lot less on the processing pole. It's usually in the freezer and section. It's in the right? freezer section because there's yeah. no preservatives in it whatsoever. And it actually has a decent amount of protein in that bread. And there you can you. get a low sodium Ezekiel as well. So that is usually my um, my top choice for, for the sandwich. And um, again, I do not promote um, the deli meats because they tend to be salty, but there is actually one brand, Boar's Head, makes a no salt added 
turkey. So in a pinch, it's a great it's a great thing you can bring on the go. Oh, that's new turkey today. Maybe with I'll your no go, sodium I'll added go, mustard. I'll go buy one from Publix. Your right Ezekiel, there. yes, um, they have it at the Publix right down the street. So on my way. Yeah. So in a pinch, I I, I do recommend that. Um, it, it helps for the road trips and things like that and the little travels. So, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, um, do what, the, what you can with the situation that you're in, you know, yeah. you're home a lot and you have time to cook and you like to cook, um, chef that, that recipe book, there's endless awesome recipes with great proteins in them. And then, you know, every once in a while, maybe you go to the grocery store and you buy the rotisserie chicken because it's already made and that's what you have time for. It's still lean. It's still a great source of protein. Sodium wise, it's probably too much and it's not something that you want to do on the regular. Yeah. But in a pinch, it's certainly better going to Publix or your local grocery store and getting the rotisserie chicken than it is to go through the drive through. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you said, you know, life isn't perfect. And, you know, here, she likes to say it's rainbows and unicorns, pretty and bubble. Wherever you are, yeah. you're not living here at this pretty center. You know, her and I both work here and, and, and even most of our, you know, obviously our employees, we try to all eat this way as much as we can, but do we do it a hundred percent exactly what we preach here? You know, that's great if you can achieve that, but we all consider ourselves like, you know, like, you know, 80, 20, 60, 40, whatever works for you. Hopefully it's as much as you can do. But if you're not, you know, if, you, if you're not eating you know, the best foods now, hey, look at what you can do and improve yourself the next day, right? Don't overwhelm yourself by looking at, the whole entire staircase, look at the step ahead of you and find out what works for you and, and try to build into, you know, a, a better you and a better lifestyle overall for yourself. I, I, I completely agree. Um, I just actually, right before this podcast, I was sitting with a few guests and, um, you know, they're, they're, um, retired. So they have a lot of time on their hands and, um, they, they were telling me this whole story that they recently moved and they sold their house and usually when you sell your house, you got a couple months, you can, you know, you can leave, you can get all your stuff together, but whoever bought their house, um, wanted to move in immediately. So they had to, for the next, I think they had four weeks to get 40 years worth of stuff out of their house. So in that period of time, in that four weeks, they ate out probably every single night. Wow. Yeah, because they 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 just were uh, not cooking. They're like, uh, I gotta I gotta figure out how to clear out this forty year old house <laughs> with stuff that I've collected for forty years. So how am I gonna do that? And and I asked them, you know, well, what 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 were some of the things that you were eating when you were dining out? And they said, you know what, we gave up burgers like thirty years ago. So that wasn't even in the repertoire because that's so they're already like we eat the fish and we eat the vegetables when we go out. But guess what? They gained fifteen pounds. Yeah. And they were still actually eating fairly healthy. But what was happening was when they were going out every single night, the fish might have been a little bit bigger. Yeah. They added a lot of oil to it. They added a lot of salt to it. So salty, buttery sauces salt, and whatever it, it, the you know, sauces. So you don't even realize so, that they cook. They, listen, that food's swimming right in the ocean and then they swim it again in all the oil they're in cooking. This, yeah. And like, I mean, the chefs are back there. Most restaurants just, you know, they're cooking with tons of oil, tons of the, fats, tons of salt. Because it tastes dude. good. That's what most people, they think that, most people want. That's what most people want. And I use this analogy yesterday and people were laughing, but it kind of made sense to me. It's like when you're eating food with the sugary, salty, fatty stuff, it's like being at the funnest party ever and you just don't want to leave the party, <laughs> right? So you just keep on eating. I don't want to leave. This is so awesome. Come join us at this party. And we're, so you come to the Pritikin Center. Um, we are a fun party, but <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So we're ready to leave when it's over as opposed to we're not going to stop. Yep, yep. And that is something that I find to be super helpful in, in the journey of trying to eat healthier is your food should taste good. You should enjoy it. Um, so if you need to have the steak once a month because you enjoy it and then you're able to go, you know, not have it for a while, then I think that that's great. And exactly. I think that if you can find the flavors, um, the spices that you like, then you will be able to continue this type of lifestyle forever. Maybe not, like you said, maybe not 100% of the time, but 80, 70% of the time. Hey, better better um, off than you were doing before, in my opinion. Right? Absolutely. And, 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 and your body, you know what? It, it actually can have a little bit of leeway sometimes. It will yeah. let you off the hook every now and again. But if you take advantage of the situation, it will it will scream back at you. And then you'll have to be even better, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I yeah. would say the main goal is to um, predominantly use plant protein as your protein 
But if you want to use some animal, certainly um, go with the less legs, the better. Go with the lean versus, you know, the higher saturated fat. So the bison versus the, the steak, right? Yeah. Chicken versus the duck. <laughs> um, yeah, and, for sure. Uh, for sure. I mean, look, sure. we could talk about protein all day, right? But there's lots of things that we can just rant and rave on. And you'll be We're hearing us that, if, 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 yeah. if you come here and join us at Pritikin. Um, you know, Kara can sit here and give you a, a, a consultation. You can join us and do a, a workshop with, with my, me and my chefs. And, and there's, there's lots to learn here. There's lots that we can teach you here. Come to Pritikin. Join us at our protein party at Pritikin. Our protein. And you know what? Most importantly, I think we have a good time here. I think so. Cheers to that. Have Take a great care, one. Thank you for listening to the Healthier Everyday Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you're interested in learning more about the Pritikin Longevity Center and how the physician-led team of wellness professionals have been helping people for almost 50 years, visit Pritikin.com. That's P-R-I-T-I-K-I-N.com.